everybody and welcome back to another Kraken Packs video. I am your host Mr. Rivers. Today is release day. Release day for Guilds of Ravnica. So I've got a whole box here. Let's get right in. Hopefully all of you are enjoying the new set. If you went to any pre-releases last weekend, let me know how you did. Most of you will have seen my pre-release kit that I didn't get to play but I did open yesterday. If you didn't see, you should go check it out. Some pretty sweet sweet pulls in that. Let's get all these out of this box like so. And um, I haven't really looked up prices or cards in this set, so this is going to be my first time really cracking into these um, and looking at them in detail. So if I pause with a lot of rares, you'll have to excuse me. There's a lot of stuff I haven't seen yet in this set because I haven't played with it and I tend not to look at spoilers as most of you should be aware by now. So we've got a Krull Harpooner or a Krull Harpooner. Murmuring Mystic. Disinformation Campaign. It seems like an interesting card especially for the Surveil decks. And whew, we, we start off strong with an Assassin's Trophy. This is the highest priced card in the set at the moment as far as I understand. And, of course, a Demir Guildgate with a Soldier Token. I mean, can't complain about pulling an Assassin's Trophy in the first pack, right? Not really. Next up, Molder Hulk. A 6-6. Six, six. Cost, costs one less to cast for each creature in your graveyard. Not bad. One enters battlefield, return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Oh, all right. Chemister's Insight. Inspiring Unicorn. This is one of the arts that they unveiled. I saw it on Twitter because um, it's hard not to see some of the spoilers on Twitter. Um, and they unveiled just the art of this. And the full art of this is a, is beautiful. Like, it's amazing. Kudos to Evan Amun, Amunzen. I apologize if I butchered his name. Uh, or even, even a Munson. I, man, I'm so bad at names. I apologize. I won't. I won't try again. And our rare is a Legion War Boss. There you go. Little two two for three with Mentor. And it makes a one one red Goblin that has to attack each turn of Able. And a Golgari Guildgate with another one one Soldier Lifelink Token. I've heard a lot of people talking about the tokens as well. Maybe we'll take a cl closer look at some of them. There's been a lot of stuff going on with the tokens. Um, and we'll talk about it a little bit here. Price of Fame, Sunhome Stalwart, uh, Circuitous Root, or cir Circuitous Root, and go and get two lands or basic lands or gates. Not bad. Ooh, we got a nice legendary. We got Izoni, Thousand Eyed, Golgari, two, black, black, green, green, two, three, with undergrowth. It says, when it enters the battlefield, create a one, one, black, and green insect creature token for each creature card in your graveyard. Pay a black and a green, sacrifice another creature, you gain a life and draw a card. Not a bad little card. And an is it Guildgate? So the tokens that I'm talking about is on the back. They have a lot of ads. And here you go. Right, so this is Rich and uh, Maria, right, from the coverage team. They're great people. If you watch any of the Twitch content or the Magic Live content, they're they're very good at their job. Absolutely, right. And kudos should be given to them. I don't feel like this ad is misplaced at all, personally. Some people are saying that they don't like having this on the back of the ad, like as their ad space. They don't like this. 
This is telling you to go to twitch.tv slash magic to watch the live coverage. And these are most likely two of the faces you're going to see if you're watching that channel. So why not put them on the card? I don't know. I just, I, I don't know if people are thinking like maybe there was just a better use for the ad space or what have you. But I feel like the, the commentators are a big part of, of the show. So, I mean, I think it's fair to add them. And I don't think that there should be any hate towards it, to be honest. Mulder Hulk. Conclave Tribunal, Sprouting Renewal, and a Bounty Agent. This is, now, this is a card I saw um, being played a couple times in the pre-release on Sunday when I was there playing. And um, people didn't realize that it was legendary only. <laughs> and they were like, ah, oh, blow, up, blow up an artifact creature or enchantment. That's pretty sweet. 2-2 two, two Vigilance, so I can swing with it, and then if I don't like what's going on, I can blow up the thing, and I'm like, but only if it's legendary, and they went, what? They write it again, they're like, oh. Immediately took it out of their deck during sideboard. Ho, ho, holy moly, how about a foil Niv-Mizzet? I'll take it, I will take it. That is a shiny rare to open up as a foil. Um, who doesn't like a foil legendary creature, right, as their foil rare? We talked about this. So here's another, just, there you go. Unlock three boosters, use this code. It's very hard. It's super hard to know this code, right? So there you go, everybody. You now know. I wonder if that's a one-time use code. <laughs> like, as in, when someone uses it, it no longer works. I highly doubt it. Beam Splitter Mage, Lava Coil, City Watch Sphinx, and a Knight of Autumn. So a 2 1 for 3. Then when it enters the battlefield, choose 1. Put 2 1 1 counters on Knight of Autumn, or destroy target artifact or enchantment, or you gain 4 life. Another is it Guildgate. Well, let's see. So this is fine. See, like, I mean, those are just ad. Those are typical ads, right? Typical ads. Affectionate Indrik. Hugging hugging people to death. Selective Snare. This seems like an interesting card, because it's X, so you pay blue and X, and you return X target creatures of the creatures of creature type of your choice to their owner's hand. It's kind of weird. Legion's Legion Guild Mage. So, 6 mana, tap, deal 3 damage to each opponent, or 3 mana, tap, tap another target creature. And our rare is a risk factor. Target opponent may have risk factor, deal 4 damage to them, or if that player doesn't, you draw 3 cards. And it's got jumpstart. And we got a foil guildgate. Man, that looks sweet, by the way. The foiling on this guildgate looks amazing. Holy moly. I don't know if you guys, I don't know if the camera does it justice. But, like, Jiminy Crickets, if I was playing a deck that had gates in it, this would be, that would be a primo gate for the deck. The art on that is fantastic. So, again, there you go. Got Rich and Maria again. There, there is one that has, I think, the pros on it as well, I think. I don't know, people just seem, there seems to be some people that are, like, bent out of shape about them putting, like, people on the cards on the ads i don't like it's wizards ad space they can do with it what they want really that's the kind of the idea arboretum elemental join shields enhanced surveillance and we got our first mythic our first mythic is a pneumat uh mnemonic betrayal so it's the demir sorcery Exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards. You may cast those cards this turn, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any type to cast those spells. At the beginning of the next end step, if any of those cards remain exiled, return them to their owners' graveyards. Exile Mnemonic Betrayal. It's interesting. It's an interesting myth mythic. And we got a foil, Chemister's Insight. Draw two cards, jumpstart. Not going to complain about that. And the tokens look like they are just alternating between those ads now. I haven't seen any different ads yet. Neurotic Wound. 
This is an interesting one. So it's a one mana instant undergrowth. Target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. This gets rid of indestructible things, and it's very good in any dredge deck. Like, holy moly. Um, House Guild Mage. Two mana, two, two. Pay a blue and a and one. Tap it. Target creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Pay two and a black. Tap it. Surveil two. Can't complain about that. Silent Dart. One mana. Pay four. Tap it. Sacrifice Silent Dart. It deals three damage to target creature. Doesn't seem great. And our rare here is a Mausoleum Secrets. So Undergrowth. Search your library for a black card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of creatures cards in your graveyard. Reveal it and put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Another is it Guildgate with another soldier token. There you go. This one's just about officially licensed accessories. Seems seems normal. That seems like a normal add to me. I don't mean so far. So far, nothing wrong. Gatekeeper gargoyle, electrostatic field, Golgari find broker, and a quadruple, uh, quasi, quasi duplicate. Holy moly, that is a we that is a mouthful. So three mana, create a token that is a copy of target creature you control. Jumpstart. Some guy was talking to me at the pre-release on Sunday about how he used this on the three three flying hexproof death touch dude, and ended up making two copies of it. And so he ended up having three of those guys on the tables, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> Having three copies of a 3-3 Flying Death Touch Hexproof seems pretty good. Demotion. World Soul Colossus. Plague Crafter. And our second mythic is a Nullhide Ferox. So this is a 6-6 for four with Hexproof, and it says you can't cast non-creature spells. Pay two mana. Nullhide Ferox loses all abilities until end of turn. Any player may activate this ability. If a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard Nullhall Ferox, put it onto the battlefield instead of putting it into your graveyard. So, we got that. And then just a regular ad. Two Mythics down, one Assassin's Trophy, no Shocklands yet. I don't know if there's any uncommons in this set that are specifically, like, of interest or value at the moment. I will look it up later. Night Veil's Sprite. Might of the Masses. Demir's Spy Bug. This card is pretty sweet in the right Surveil deck. So it's a 1-1 one, one for 2, but it's Flying and Menace, which is already just very good for, for 2 mana. Then whenever you sail, you just uh, Surveil, you just put a 1-1 one, one counter on it, so it gets bigger. Well, see, we talk about not having Shocklands, and then we just get a Shockland. That's how this works, right? So there you go. There's a nice Temple Garden. Again, the art on this looks amazing. They've done a very good job on the art in these sets. Like, they just look phenomenal looks phenomenal so we've got one assassin's trophy we've got one foil niv mizzet we've got two mythics and one shockland so far and we're only a third of the way through the box holy moly what else are we gonna find what else is this box gonna hold for us might of the masses glaive of the guild pact golgari find broker and uh karamadiri uh kamaradiri Kamara Deary. I don't know how you pronounce this. I apologize. Butcher. Butchering that thing. Four mana and a green-white. Sorcery. You gain X life and draw X cards where X is the number of creatures you control. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. And we, did, we got a second foil rare. A second foil rare. Light of the Legion. Foil rare. Five, five flying mentor. Uh, for six. Four and two white. When Light of the Legion dies, put a 1-1 counter on each white creature you control. Holy moly, and it's an angel? My goodness. That is a sweet angel card. My goodness. League Guild Mage. So this is the Is It Guild Mage. 2-2 two, two for 2 again, right? Blue and a red, just like everyone else. Pay three and a blue, draw a card. Pay X and a red, copy target instant or sorcery spell you control with converted mana cost X. You may choose new targets for the copy. Inescapable Blaze. Gird for battle. Gird for battle. Mm. 
and Unmoored Ego. Another Demir sorcery for one and a blue and a black. Choose a card name. Search target opponent's graveyard hand and library for up to four cards with that name and exile them. That player shuffles their library, then draws a card for each card exiled from their hand this way. So if they exile them from their hand, they get to draw. But if they don't exile them from their hand, they don't get to draw anything. Basically like uh, New Age Cranial Extraction, I think that's what it was. It's quite similar. I mean, it costs a little more, but still. Uh, Ledev Champion. Street Riot. Lot, a lot left giant. And our rare? An overgrown tomb. Take it. Another shock land. Mmm. Tasty, tasty. Who doesn't like shock lands? And another foil here. Our foil is a necrotic wound. So this uncommon, I don't know if it's going to see play or not, but I feel like it's not a bad card. Um, in the right dredge deck for... Like, I mean, it could see play in modern, to be honest. One mana instant, and it gives negative x, negative x equal to the number of creatures in your graveyard and and like the dredge decks definitely play that like green black junk like they play they dump creatures into the graveyard all the time it's the whole point of the deck uh integrity and intervention as our first split card that's our first split card we've seen so far out of this whole box uh hasda marshall little one one with uh tap it and get more dudes when you swing with three or more dudes demir spy bug again and Ritual of Soot. Two and a black black. Destroy all creatures with converted mana cost three or less. Another is it. We got an insect token. What's on the back of it? Oh, look. Magic the Gathering Portal. This is the thing that they talked about. So Portal, they printed these ads and said, ooh, download Portal, but it's not ready. It's not ready. Don't download it yet. Well, maybe if you're watching this quite a bit later, maybe it's ready by now, but like... When this video was filmed, it wasn't ready. Like, so when they, they, they put the ads out and then they put a, a statement out saying, oh, we put the ads in before, like we had a very aggressive timeline and we were very uh, hopeful that we would get out in time and then they weren't. Chemister's Insight, Wand of Vertebrae, and March of the Multitudes, another mythic here. So this is an interesting one because it is uh, two white, a green, and X, and it has Convoke. And it creates X-1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. But it's instant speed. So you can do it at the end of your opponent's turn. Or you can do it after you attack. Or you can do it after you cast something like join shields to untap all your things. Like, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. Uh, Vernadi Shieldmate Foil. Little 2-2 two, two Vigilance Man. And an elf token with another portal download. The portal tool, based on what I've heard about it, um, I haven't done a lot of research on it, but from what I've heard about it and what it looks like on the back of those ads, it looks like it's going to be a pretty nice little app to be used in any of your Magic games. So here's this 3-3 three, three Flying Death Touch Hexproof guy I was talking about. Two blue and two black. 3-3 three, three Flying Hexproof? Uh, Death Touch Hexproof. Who, compl who, who couldn't complain about that kind of thing? Pretty good for four mana. Cru crush Contraband? Orc? Orcran Assassin, or Orchan, Orchran Assassin, or Ocran Assassin. I don't know how you pronounce this one, but anyway. Ocran Assassin, I think that's probably what I'm going to say. And our rare, a Blood Operative. A 3-1 three, for 3, 1 and a two, black black. Vampire Assassin with lifelink, and it says, When it enters the battlefield, you may exile target card from a graveyard. When you surveil, if Blood Operative is in your graveyard, you may pay 3 life. If you do, return it to your hand. So not a bad little guy to be come in and sacrificed for things, or you swing with him, or you block with him to trade with something with three toughness or, or less, and then you can just get him back if you have enough surveil in your deck. Boros Challenger, Gatekeeper Gargoyle, Inescapable Blaze, and Thief of Sanity. 2-2 two, two flying um, for three, one and a blue-black. And it says, whenever Thief of Sanity deals combat damage to a player, look at the top three cards of that player's library, exile one of them face down, then put the rest onto the into the graveyard. For as long as that card remains exiled, you may look at it, you may cast it, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any type to cast that spell. So it's basically um, Gaunti, only when it attacks as opposed to when it enters the battlefield. So there you go. An interesting little thing. And it's a 2-2 two, two flyer for 3, which is already not terrible, right? 
Let's make another row of rares here. We can move these over a little bit. Whoop. Conclave Tribunal, Conclave Guild Mage, Rampaging Monument, and a Hatchery Spider. Reach 5747, seven, which has undergrowth, and it says when you cast this spell, reveal the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. You may put a green permanent card with convert a mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. And we got a Demir Guild Gate and a Goblin Token. What else we got? Boom. Electrostatic Field, Join Shields, Crawl Swarm, and a Chromatic Lantern. I'll take it. Ch chromatic Lantern is a staple in a lot of the formats. And it's also just a very good card. It sees a lot of play in a lot of different formats because it just fixes mana for days. Alright, we've got a Swarm Guild Mage. I think that's our the last Guild Mage we needed. Which is, or maybe we don't have the Boros one yet. I can't remember. Anyway, Golgari, black and a green. Pay, f pay five. Four and a black. Tap it. Creatures you control get plus one, plus oh, and gain menace until end of turn. Or pay one and a green and tap it and you gain two life. Street Riot. Street Street Riot. Riot. Flight of Equinauts. And our rare is a Runaway Steamkin. A 1-1 one, one for two. A one and a red. Whenever you cast a red spell, if Runaway Steamkin has fewer than three 1-1 one, one counters on it, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Remove three one one counters from it and add three red mana to your mana pool. And we got a foil mood mark painter. It's so moody. The painting on the face painting is is a mood art. It lets you bring out your true insides. It lets you express yourself visually on your face. Crackling Drake. Status and statue. Grid for battle, or gird for battle, and Beast Whisperer. Whisper, whisper. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. Little 2-3 for 4. With a Demir Guildgate and an Elf Knight token. What's next? Boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. There we are. Alright, we're getting into the split cards now. We got Invert and I Invent. An invert is the card that was errated on day one because it's supposed to say until end of turn, but it does not. So invert, which says switch the power and toughness of up to uh, of each of up to two target creatures, and then it doesn't say until end of turn, and it should. Crush contraband, book devourer, and oh, we got another mythic. Four mythics: Underrealm Lich, four three zombie elf shaman. For five, three, and a black-green. It says, if you would draw a card, instead look at the top three cards of your library, then put one into your hand, and the rest into your graveyard. Pay for life, Underrealm Lich, gains indestructible until end of turn, tap it. So, the interesting thing about this is, um, I believe it was Mr. Johnny Silvers on Twitter uh, brought up a question with this, with this card, with Sylvan Library. So, uh, you guys think about it, and let me know what you think. So Sylvan Library, of course, right, lets you essentially draw additional cards, but you got to pay life for them if you keep them, right? Otherwise, you put them back, right? Or I should say, you can draw additional cards, but for each one you do, you have to pay for life, right? But this says if you would draw a card, instead look at the top three cards of your library, then put one into your hand and the rest into your graveyard, so you bin them. And he was curious if this would overwrite the stat, the, the statement that says, hey... For each card you keep, pay for life um, of library. But I don't think it's the case. I think that that... So this says when you would draw a card, if you would draw a card, instead you drew this. But library says you may draw two additional cards, and then for each one you keep, you have to pay the life. So this overwrites the draw step. So instead of drawing w w three cards from library and keeping three cards, the possibility of keeping three cards, you draw... Three, six, nine, and keep three. And then if you keep three, then you have to pay the life. I think that's how it works. But let me know what you think below in the comments. I'm curious about this interaction. 
Maybe I'm maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm wrong. I have no idea. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, go check out Twitter. I follow Mr. Johnny Slivers himself, so you can go check him out. Glaive of the Guild Pack. House Guild Mage. Circuitous Root. And Drowned Secrets. Two mana enchantment in blue. One in a blue. It says whenever you cast a blue spell, target player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Oh, the mill plan! The mill plan is back! Guess who's back? Back again. Mill plan's back. Tell your friends. Man, if they reprint Hedron Crab in, in this set, I'm going to be super, super ridiculously stoked. I know they shouldn't, because that was on Zendikar. But, like, I would be super stoked. They need a reprint. Where was Hedron Crab in, in BFC? That's what I want to know. What happened to Hedron Crab? Did he die? Goblin Banneret. Glow Spore Shaman. A 3-1 for 2. When it enters the battlefield, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. You may put a land card from, from your graveyard on top of your library. Weird. And we got a Steam Vents. All right. We got three shock lands out of this box. Ooh, and we got a Vraska emblem. There you go. And there you go. Step of the Worlds of Ravnica. Oh, this is the D&D &D stuff. This is an ad for the D&D &D, uh, Ravnica stuff that they're planning to release, which is kind of cool. I li I'm a D&D &D player, so I really like that. But also, like, you know, um, I just, I like magic, and I like D&D, &D, and I'm super stoked that they're starting to meld them two together. Golgari Raiders. Creeping Chill. Thoughtbound Phantasm. And a Narcomoeba. Or Narcomobia, or whatever you want to call it. Good little rare. And a foil Demir locket. I'll take it. I'll take it. I think the lockets are great. I enjoy them. I mean, they're better than the banners from cons, in my opinion, even though the banners gave you three mana, because the cons banners, you had to pay four to get only one card, or three to only get one card, and it had to be one of each color. So you had to make all three colors just to draw. Whereas these are pay four, but it's blue or black, blue or black, blue or black, blue or black, draw two cards. Thoughtbound Phantasm. We had a Goblin Crater Maker there, too. And we've got a wor World Soul Colossus. Whew! Mythic number five. Aurelia, Exemplar of Justice. There it is. A 2-5 for four. Two and a red-white. Flying Mentor. At the beginning of combat on your turn, choose up to one target creature you control. Until end of turn, that creature gets plus two, plus oh. Gains Trample if it's red. And gains Vigilance if it's white. So if you give it to Aurelia, she becomes a 4-5 Vigilance Trample with Mentor. Seems pretty good. Seems pretty good. And we got a little bird token. A burb. Burb, burb, burb. Burb is the word. Boom. Undercity Necro uh, Necrolisk. Boros Challenger. Pilfering Imp. <laughs> and we've got a Light of the Legion. There it is. We have a Foil Light of the Legion over there, but now we have a Light of the Legion. Regular. So now we can I can make that Angel deck. She seems like a pretty nice Angel to put into an Angel deck, let me tell you. Especially if you're playing Mono Angels. When it dies, you just put a 1-1 one -one counter on each white creature you control. Seems pretty good. Lava Coil. Inspiring Unicorn. Thought Erasure, and a Watery Grave. Wow, we've hit four of five shocks now. All we're missing is what? The Boros? Yeah, we're missing the Boros shock land. Sacred Foundry? We're missing Sacred Foundry. We've Wow, I can't believe we've hit almost all the shocks out of one box. I would never have imagined that, to be honest. Golgari Raider. Hellkite Whelp. Discovery and Dispersal. And... A Bounty of Might. This card blows people out so hard. It's six mana, but it gives plus nine, plus nine, and you can split it up three ways if you want. Target creature gets plus three, plus three. Target creature gets plus three, plus three. And target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. Somebody got blown out by it in the sealed on Sunday that I played in. I was sitting beside them when it happened, and I went, oh, yeah. I also saw Graham from Lodi Ready Run get blown out by it when he was playing Arena on uh, the day of the o open beta. It was pretty crazy. Understudy Necrolisk. He, uh, Necrolisk. He was like, "Oh, I'm fine. I'm at like 12." And then so he was like, "Swing, give plus nine. And he was like, "Oh, I'm dead." 
Disinformation Campaign, District Guide, and we got Assure or Assemble, which is um, a split card, of course. So the first one is a green-white or a green-white, and it says put a 1-1 counter on target creature. That creature gains indestructible until end of turn. Or for six, you can pay four and a green-white and create three 2-2 two -two green and white elf knight creature tokens with vigilance. And an is it Guildgate with another elf token. Oh man, let's see, what else can we find? This box has been sweet to us. Affectionate Indric, Swarm Guild Mage, Book Devourer, and a Fire Mines Research. Enchantment for is it blue and a red. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a charge counter on Fire Mines, Fire Mines Research. For one and a blue, remove two charge counters from Fire Mines Research, draw a card. Pay one and a red, remove five charge counters from Fire Mines Research, and it deals five damage to any target. And a Guilt Gate. Ooh, with a nice 4-4 four, four Flying Vigilance uh, Angel token. I'll take it. I will take it. Ooh. Let's see what else we can find. Beacon Bolt. Grappling Sundrew. Grappling Sundrew? That's weird. That's a weird name. Wee Dragonauts! Wee Dragonauts. And our rare is a Charnel Troll. Or Charnel Troll. 4-4 four, four Trampler for one and a black green. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Charnel Troll. Otherwise, sacrifice it. Pay... A black and a green, discard a creature card, put a 1-1 counter on Charnel Troll. So he double dips. He double dips. He lets he lets you discard your creature cards for a, gr a black and a green to get a 1-1 counter, and then exiles it from the graveyard to get another 1-1 counter. A Conclave Cavalier. An Arboretum Elemental. A Swath Cutter Giant. And... Our rare is a Swift Blade Vindicator. It's a 1-1 one, one with Double Strike, Vigilance, and Trample. And the idea is that it's a 1-1 one, one in Boros, so you get to mentor it quite a bit. Which is the idea, I believe. Boom. Rock Charger. Crippling Chill. Thoughtbound Phantasm. And an Ionize as our rare. Counter Target Spell. Ionize deals 2 damage to that spell's controller. Counter burn. There it is. All right, last pack. We didn't get any Planeswalkers, so we'll have to wait and see if we get any out of the next box. But hey, we did pretty good here, I think. Two foil rares, one of them being Niv-Mizzet, I'm pretty happy about. We got our Assassin's Trophy, and we hit four of the five shocks, along with a narco Meba or Mobia, and a Chromatic Lantern. I'll take it. Guild Summit. Lotleth Troll, or Lotleth Giant, I should say. And our rare is a Pelt Collector, which is a 1-1 one, one for 1 that says when a creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, if that creature's power is greater than Pelt Collector, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. As long as it has, it has three or one, one, more 1-1 one, one counters on it, it has Trample. And we did get a foil in the last pack, which is a war, Wari, or Wari, a copy. So we did pretty good here. Oh, we also got a Rowl Emblem in the last pack. Look at that. So, I mean, not bad. We got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine foils. That's pretty good for a box. We got five mythics, also pretty good for a box. And we hit four of the five shock lands from a box, also very good. The fact that we also hit the Assassin's Trophy, as well as Chromatic Lantern and Narco Mobia, pretty good. I'm going to give this box a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I've been your host, Mr. Bevers. Don't forget, I have a Patreon where you can help support the channel. I'd greatly appreciate it, even if you can't, just watching and giving a thumbs up and... Liking the video, I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everybody. And as always, may your pulls ever be better.